All right, everybody, welcome back to the channel. It is Maddie here from Chill TCG. So today we're going to be taking a look at the championship winning deck list from Chill Series 19. Uh, it was our man uh, Fernando Cifuentes. This was his third Chill Series tournament that he actually won. He's the only one to win multiple tournaments, um, and he's definitely the first one to win three tournaments. So definitely super impressive. Uh, another thing that's impressive to note, um, this is his deck list here. He was actually playing Poison Eternatus. Um, and this was actually the exact same deck list that he used to win, uh, I think it was Chill Series number 9 um, or 8, which was uh, exactly like 2 or 3 months uh, before this tournament here. So, just absolutely ridiculous uh, that he was able to kind of come out and, and get a, another win with the same deck. Um, and this is, uh, I think this is the second or third time that Poison Eternatus has won. Um, and it's actually a pretty good deck. So, uh, before we get into it though, I want to let you guys know that, you know, Card Cavern uh, Trading Cards is our sponsor. They're a great company. Uh, if you're looking to get PTCGO codes or codes for really for uh, other games as well, go check them out. Uh, link will be down in the description below. And you can use the code CHILLTCG for 5% off your entire order. So, uh, you know, big shout out to them. Go check them out. And uh, let's get right into the deck list. So, um, you know, I guess a lot of people these days are running different versions of Eternatus. Um, you know, this was sort of the second big uh, successful version of Eternatus that people started to play. Um, and, and it definitely has its upsides. These days, I think people are just sort of playing like a straight E-turn uh, with maybe some sort of um, uh, maybe big, or not big. Yeah, I mean, sometimes the people play big charms in E-turn now. That's sort of a popular one that's popping up. And uh, Hammers, Hammers is a big one. Um, but uh, other than those, Poison E-turn seems to be... Uh, the, the other sort of big version of Eternatus and overall I think that um, there's a lot of different variants for Etern but it's honestly probably the strongest deck in the format right now without any sort of specific archetype uh, being uh, you know put in that spot but today we're looking at Poison Etern and uh, this is a pretty standard Poison Etern list um, and uh, I think it's a good one so we're going to go ahead and just take a look at this uh, you know to start off in no, partic uh, no particular order <laughs> I don't know why I say it like that um, in no particular order you know, we got uh, a 4-4 lineup for Eternatus V and Etern VMAX. If you don't know, Etern VMAX, you know, it just does huge damage. You want to fill up your board. The ability lets you put 8 dark Pokemon on your bench. Um, and the more Pokemon you have, uh, a total of 9, you can hit for 270. So the thing is a tank. Uh, Etern V, we really just play it to get into the VMAX, but Power Accelerator can be nice uh, on that first turn, going second to sort of uh, get that extra energy on board to another Etern. And, uh, you know, kind of prevent you from getting hammered um, for the most part. Uh, however, you know, of course, we're running four Crobats as well. That's just sort of a given. So that's already 12 Pokemon right there. Uh, but we are running 22 in the deck, so we have 10 more to take a look at. Um, we're running a 4-3 lineup of Krogunk and Toxicroak. Uh, Krogunk, not very uh, important, but Toxicroak here is actually very cool. So uh, Toxicroak, we play it for the ability. We're never going to be attacking with it. Uh, more Poison. So you put two damage counters on your opponent's Poison Pokemon um, uh, between turns, between checkup. Um, and this stacks. So we're playing... Multiple, right? Throughout the game, we probably want to get at least two, uh, hopefully three Toxicroaks down on our uh, our bench. And that way, uh, when we do poison our opponent's Pokemon, um, they're taking 50 or 70 damage between turns, which really stacks up. Um, and even just one turn, the 70 plus uh, 270 from E turn, um, at the, you know, the most damage possible, that is uh, 340. So you're one hit KOing anything in the game, um, you know, disregarding Big Charm. But, you know, this deck really just focuses on doing a massive amount of damage. I mean, that's really kind of the the idea with this deck. It's got a little bit of a slower setup, uh, maybe compared to other E-turn lists. Again, it can struggle with hammers. I'm not saying it can't. Um, but, uh, you know, for the most part, that's sort of the play, right? Is you just slowly try to set up your board state um, and uh, eventually just start smacking away for insane damage between the Poison and E-turn VMAX. So Toxicroak, he's going to be the guy that adds on the Poison damage and we're running a 4-3 lineup of those. Um, next up, we're running Galarian Slowbro V, so you might be wondering, how do we actually poison our opponent's Pokemon? This is how we do it, Galarian Slowbro V, man. It's, uh, you know, it is what it is. Uh, it's not a great Pokemon at all, other than the fact that you can just uh, auto-poison if you're in the active slot. Um, and it's your ability, so you, your turn doesn't end. And, and the whole idea with this deck, between uh, various different ways to switch in and out, um, is, you know, to, to go into Slowbro. Uh, switch into Slowbro Poison, switch out and attack with E-Turn, and then that poison damage stacks on. So we're running two Slowbro Vs. Uh, because it's a consistency card. It's definitely not something you want to prize in this deck. Um, and if one goes down, you're probably going to want to use another one as well. So Galarian Slowbro V, it's just extremely, extremely important. Um, and uh, yeah, we're running two of those. It's the way that we do our additional damage, right? We have to poison somehow, and this is sort of our best way to do it. It is a Dark-type Pokemon. Um, and then next up, lastly, we just run one Hoopa, this Evil Admonition Hoopa. Uh, this actually won Fernando the uh, the championship. It was the one that took that final KO there. 
Um, and uh, it can be extremely clutch. In my opinion, this is probably the best uh, one energy single prize basic attacker in the game right now. Evil Admonition, it's 10 plus 20 more for each of your opponent's Pokemon that has an ability. Um, and this is really good. A lot of people are playing Crobat, they're playing Dedenne's. Um, even just attacking Pokemon. A lot of Pokemon right now have abilities. The best Pokemon have abilities. And uh, late in the game, when your opponent's board is filled up with Jirachis, uh, Zacians, whatever it might be, uh, this thing can be hitting for, I think, uh, well, I guess at the maximum, it can be hitting for 130. Um, but uh, oftentimes, maybe you're hitting for you know 70 or, or 110 or whatnot, which is actually very good right, for one energy. Um, and it's a, it's a colorless energy as well, so you have that kind of clutch factor in there. Um, and, uh, yeah, for my money, this is sort of your best option, right? To just sort of, for in terms of Pokemon that you can just play uh, on your board, attach, switch in, and attack, this is probably the best one that you could play. Uh, the other Hoopa is not bad. It does 90. Uh, but overall, I think that uh, it's debatable which one is better. But they're very similar cards, actually. It's funny that both Hoopas are pretty similar. But that is our one sort of um, alternate attacker right now in the deck. Uh, this deck does struggle against, other, you know, against some things like, um, you know, Luke Metal that's playing like a Stealthy Hood. It's, it's not going to be great for you. Um, you know, for sure. Uh, single price archetypes, you know, you might struggle with as well. Things like uh, Mad Party, you know, you might struggle with just because you don't really have anything, um, you know, to kind of attack with in terms of single prize attackers, right? And once they, you know, start KOing your, your multiple prize Pokemon, like your E-turns and stuff, you might struggle with that as well. Uh, but for the most part, this E-turn list uh, definitely did very well. We'll take a look at the matchups a little bit later, but um, definitely, you know, it got the win on uh, Ability Scorch in the finals um, against Haruki. Um, and I think that this deck has a good matchup for sure um, against uh, uh, Santa Scorch. So, you know what? That's the Pokemon count. We're running 22 Pokemon. It is a lot, but this deck loves playing a lot of Pokemon. And, uh, you know, I don't, I don't think that it really sets us back too, too much. And then if you look at trainers, it makes sense because we're just, most of our trainers are just Pokemon Search or just Draw Engine cards. So uh, we got four Quick Balls. Find your basics. Uh, we got uh, three Great Balls. Look at the top seven cards of your deck. Grab whatever, and then four Pokecoms, just in case you have a Pokemon in hand that you don't need, but you're looking for a Pokemon that you do need. Pokecom is really good in this deck since you're running such a high amount of Pokemon, um, with a little bit of variance between those Pokemon as well, right? So I think Pokecom is very, very good. It's also good for a card. These are all good cards for sort of burning down your hand uh, to play Crobat to draw more cards, right? The less cards in your hand, the more you draw with Crobat. So all three of these cards are really good to sort of burn, even if you're not really looking for stuff. Um, running four switch. Now we're running a lot of switching options in this deck, and, and like I said, with the Slowbro V, you want to switch in and out. You want to double switch. You want to get that poison. So it's important to run a lot of switching options. We run four just switch cards. It's the best switching option in the game, I guess. Um, and then we're running two Dark Cities. Dark City is really the only stadium that makes sense to play in this deck. So basic Dark Pokemon in play. Yours and your opponents have no retreat cost. This means that if this stadium is in play, you only need one switch to get, to get a double switch out with the Galarian Slowbro V. Because, of course, he retreats for free. So does Crobat. So does Eternatus V. Uh, anything other than VMAX and, and Toxicroak will, will retreat for free. Uh, but we're running four switch. So Dark City, it's just a, a, a nice sort of extra way to get some switching options out. Um, and then just moving up forward, uh, you know, keeping on with the switching options, we're running two Hiding Energies, um, which gives your Dark Pokemon free retreat as well. So between the wide variety of options of free retreating and uh, the four switch cards, you should be pretty um, consistently getting that double switch out for the poison. Uh, next up for supporters, we're running four Boss, three Marty, and four Research. Boss, again, in this deck, it likes to take big one-hit KOs. So, like, I think Boss's Orders is really appropriate because... You know, realistically, it's pretty easy. It's it's fairly easy to get the double switch out. And then as long as you have boss, right, you can boss up anything on the bench and KO it, whether that's a full HP VMAX, um, any Pokemon V, um, as long as it's not Zamazenta, I guess. But uh, yeah, for the most part, boss, it's it's extremely good in, in Eternatus in general, um, and especially in Poison Etern for sure. So I think four boss is definitely really good. And then we have three Marnie, four Research. Um, I guess, you know, you can kind of take liberty here. Um, I guess some decks are just going to run 4-4-4, four, 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 but you know what? I don't know if, if Fernando decided, like, I don't necessarily need uh, four Marnies. I'd rather have four Research and four Boss, and there just wasn't an extra space in the deck. Um, but again, these are one of these things where you can kind of take out one card, add a card, uh, switch one card or two cards here in the deck, and it's not going to make it too, too different. It's really up to preference at that point. Uh, but I think this supporter lineup is pretty appropriate for Eternatus VMAX, I would say. Um, and then four Research, yeah. Uh, so that's the supporter lineup. It's super standard. Like, there's nothing, a little bit, any, anything crazy there at all. No Kogas or anything <laughs> anything wild like that. Um, and then we have uh, one Capture Energy. So, I mean, E-Turn does have a colorless energy in its attack cost. So does Hoopa. So it kind of makes sense. Like, you might as well run a Capture Energy. It's just going to sort of accelerate, um, you know, all of that time or all of that sort of effort that you're um, trying to put Pokemon on your bench. It's just going to help with that. And, 
Again, you can attach it to pretty much anything. Crow, even Crobat has a colorless and its attack cost. Uh, E-turn, uh, E-turn V, you can power accelerator. So it, it, it's not bad at all. Like, I think you run one because, like, why not, right? It, you're never going to be in a spot where you're going to put two, uh, you know, or have two colorless in your hand anyway. So I think this deck just benefits from it. The only thing is you are running three special energies in this deck, and a lot of cards, uh, like, um, I guess... Uh, Senti or Dragapult or whatever uh, might be running uh, Giratina to discard special energies and then a lot of decks are running hammers So again, this deck does struggle struggle with energy removal like I'm not trying to say it doesn't um, but uh, for the most part um, You know as long as your opponent doesn't hit all this hammers and Giratina you a few times Then you should be able to set up uh, eventually and just sort of come back easily uh, in the late game by taking big KO so we're running 10 energy in total. It's just one capture two hiding and then we got seven basic dark I know a lot of people these days uh, for a little bit there, people were playing Dangerous Drill, which also discards special energy. But, you know, that card seems a little bit less uh, popular these days. People are just deciding to run hammers and kind of, uh, you know, passing on Dangerous Drill. So, it's up to you. I mean, whether you think that special energies are needed in E-Turn, I think that hiding energy is very much needed in Poison E-Turn. Um, so, you know, keep that in mind. But, uh, yeah, 10 energies in total. I think 10 is definitely pretty good for E-Turn. I wouldn't run more or less than that, to be fair. Uh, so that's the deck list. Um, I, I, we're going to fade out real quick, and I'm just going to pull up his matchups, and we'll talk about those uh, just real quick. All right, uh, we're back. Here we are. So this is uh, Fernando's, um, this was his uh, his matchups throughout the tournament. So kind of gives you an idea of what the metagame was like. Uh, but for the most part, just to give you an idea of sort of how this deck performed in a variety of different matchups. Um, we're going to start just from the bottom. So, uh, you know, it's one thing to note that Fernando did go 4-0 against, uh, Santa Scorch players. He hit two, he hit one in phase one, two in, uh, phase two, and then he hit one right there in finals, right? So a lot of these are good Santa Scorch players like Steven, Ham uh, Hamula, Hamula had a good run. Cash Vendor is a great Senti player. Haruki was very good as well. So these are good Santa Scorch players. I think it stands to note that, uh, Poison Eatern does have a really good matchup against Santa Scorch. Fernando, of course, is a good player, so I'm not saying, like, the matchup carried him or anything, but... You know, it's definitely, I think, favored, um, at least in some sense, uh, uh, you know, like against Senescorch. So, um, and then also, if we take a look, he went 3-0, uh, and uh, 4-0, and actually, against uh, E-Turns as well, other E-Turn lists. Um, and I'll just take a quick look here, just to get an idea. So, this isn't, point. that's just like a weird, different E-Turn list. Um, let's look at Vitor Lugan's list. Uh, he was running um, straight E-turn. I think most of these are going to be straight E-turn. I don't know if, if anyone else was running Poison E-turn. Um, yeah, so these are all straight E-turn lists. Uh, it stands to note, too, that Poison E-turn has a better matchup against, like, a standard E-turn. Of course, Hammers is going to be kind of a difficult thing to get around, but for the most part, like, if you're able to one-shot KO uh, other E-turn V-maxes, then, you know, I think no matter what, you're probably going to have the advantage. Um, like I said, it's, it's not as, I think, like... Uh, dramatic as the advantage with Santa Scorch, uh, but the fact that he did beat four other Eternatus Vs, which weren't poison variants, kind of says something. So, you know, I think that poison Etern, you know, you do have a good matchup against um, uh, Santa Scorch, and you have a better matchup against uh, Eternatus, a normal Eternatus V Max, uh, you know, other than just, you know, like I think poison is better than just playing straight in the, in the mirror matchup at least. Um, and then if we look at his ADP matchups, so he actually got two losses against ADP, and I kind of understand this to a sense. Uh, ADP is, is, isn't super phenomenal of a deck right now, but Poison E-Turn, it has a little bit of a slower build. Sometimes uh, ADPs are running max consistency or they're running hammers. Either way, ADP is a very fast-paced deck, and all they really have to do, right, is get that GX and then boss-boss game. Uh, again, you, you know, you're easily one-shotting everything on their on their board, but I just think that it, it outpaces Poison Eternatus. So keep that in mind. That might be a matchup that you honestly probably struggle with a little bit. Um, but... Uh, yeah, I mean, again, it's it's a matchup you can win, but I, I think that, uh, you know, it is a kind of a bit of a struggle against uh, ADP, more so than just straight E-turn, because, you know, I think straight E-turn has a little bit better of a fast pace to it, and it's a little bit more consistent, um, and, and that's just sort of something to keep in mind as well. Uh, he played Control here. Um, this is Muck Control. I don't know what this matchup entails really at all. I don't, I, I don't, I have no idea. Like, I, I don't know. I, I don't really even know how to play this, uh, this Control deck. I haven't really seen much of it. It did win... Are, did very well at one of our Chill TCG Cups, and I did watch a few games of it, but I don't know exactly how that matchup between E-Turn kind of correlates, and I didn't really think too much about it. So, I don't know. Leave it, you know, tell me in the comment section below, do you think that Control has a bad matchup against E-Turn? I think the Poison could hurt it. Um, you know, that kind of seems like the Poison might be kind of important, but yeah, I don't know. Uh, how does Control do against Poison E-Turn? Probably not that great. Um, and then, uh, I guess, uh, okay, so we'll move on to Peak. So, he did play two Peaks. 
Uh, it was actually well, one peak. It was Gabriel Smart twice. Gabe's a great player. Uh, his peak uh, peaker on the list, I believe, is running four hammers and two yell grunts. And it is. So, I mean, that's, you know, that's going to be difficult, right, if they if they kind of get some, some good rolls, right, between their hammers and finding their yell grunts. It's just going to be hard. Like, they're going to outpace you and just start destroying you with Bolton um, or maybe even maybe even just uh, get, like, they can't really get you in, like, a, uh, a paralysis lock with, like, uh, tandem shock or anything like that. But I think for the most part, um, that kind of comes down to luck in a sense. Like, Gabe lost that first game. I think he might have just gotten sacked or something. Um, and that happens. Like, I'm not saying, like, Pigram should always win that matchup, but I think that it has a much better matchup in sort of the same sense that ADP does. But definitely for the Hammers um, and the Yell Grunts, like, that's just a lot of energy denial. And I think that if you're getting good rolls on those, then you're going to have a good matchup against Eternatus. I just don't think it can keep up. Um, again, though, you know, if Etern does get that power accelerator, you miss Hammers a couple times. I think you're in a pretty tough spot uh, as the Pigram player. But, you know, for the most part, I think that matchup's actually pretty even. I would say 50 50 is not bad. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, peak, you know, that peak list is definitely designed to have a better matchup against Eternatus. So, um, I think going 50, 50 kind of makes uh, a little bit of sense there. Uh, he beat an Orbeetle. I just don't think Orbeetle does well at all against Etern. Um, it is immune to the poison. So that's one thing to note. Um, but, um, yeah, I don't, I don't think that it's necessarily good for Orbeetle. Um, but, uh, you know, Orbeetle is not a fantastic deck. I love Orbeetle. Um, and I, and I, it's one of my favorite decks, but, um, I, it's not a great matchup. Um, at all it's definitely winnable for Orbital, but yeah i would say Etern probably has like a 55 45 or like probably like a 60 40 there um against the uh, against an Orbital list and uh lastly he played a game of blounce um in the, the top four match blounce is interesting so you know i i think at first first glance i want to say that blounce has a a good matchup against Eternatus, but now that I say that i probably want to just see that this is chrysephalon this isn't blounds and i think chrysephalon has a much harder time um, and I think that a deck those that just sort of focuses on blounds, if you're running just a seven or sorry, just a, a four of of blounds, and that's sort of your, um, you know, main factor of your deck, your main attacker, then you'd probably do have a better matchup. To be fair, uh, Chrysephalon I think struggles with E turn and um, more so at least, and and, and uh, you know, yeah. So I, I don't know, right? E turn can kind of like boss up Reshi or or Cram and and, and Dedenne and stuff and take KOs, uh, whereas with blounds. You know, he can still do that, with, but with Blinds, you can definitely more consistently get that big damage KO with, with Blacephalon. So, um, yeah, Chrysephalon, uh, I think, struggles, but just, I think, straight Blinds has a much better time with E-Turn in general. Uh, but these were Fernando's matchups. So, you know, big shout-out to uh, Fernando. He's uh, he's a three-time champion. He had a cool deck list. Um, this is, I can, I, I made a video on Poison E-Turn a while back, but, you know, he won again, so we gotta make, we gotta give him his, uh, his, uh, his dues, you know what I'm saying? We gotta... We got to pay it back to him. So big shout out to Fernando. He had a great run. I thank you guys, everybody, so much for playing. It was just super awesome. Um, I really, really appreciate it. Chill Series 19, it was a great tournament. Shout out to Card Cavern for sponsoring. Um, and, uh, and yeah, uh, we're going to sign off here. So uh, Chill Series 20, it's actually the last regular Chill Series of Season 2. Uh, you should go play in it. It's on Wednesday. I'm posting this on Monday. So on Wednesday, the tournament's going to go up. It's free entry, 200-pack prize pool uh card cavern sponsoring the event just a fantastic uh, fantastic company it's going to be a great event as well so if you're looking to qualify for an inv invitational tournament this is your last chance to do so before the last chance qualifier um and uh, this is kind of your best shot if you're kind of on the bubble there or if you're or if you you know just need a little bit more points to get in there so i you know i highly suggest you come play it's gonna be really fun um and uh we're gonna wrap it up for the video so link to register for the tournament will be down below i uh, link to go join or go to card cavern and get your you know your sweet deals so that'll be down below um, and his deck list will be down below as well. So thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys soon. And uh, yeah, peace out.